and send it to your office after the fact. All right, so we're going to start <clears throat> by talking about saving searches, subscriptions, and portals. And so really the first thing with a lot of that is um, they are three distinct tasks that can be used separately or together to help um, really make that client engagement more robust. And so we're going to break them out into three separate pieces today. But as we talk about them, we're going to kind of layer them on top of each other like a cake. And so you can see how they can work separately or together. And you can use one or all of them with your clients, depending on, you know, their needs, how they like to work and what you want to do. So I'm here in Flex, and this is just my general Flex account. And so today when we work, we're going to work a lot in, in the searches. And so we're not going to work with a particular type of search. We're just going to kind of plug in some random information to give us some data to be able to use today. So I'm going to hop into menu here, and I'm going to click on uh, quick search. So now when I do that, just a reminder, your quick search, I tend to call it kind of your all-encompassing search because uh, this is where most of the features are housed for searching. So I'm gonna close this out. Just a quick reminder, we have our uh, filters over here off to the left-hand side. If at any time we ever wanna switch out of a residential search into another property type, those options are available for you here as well. We have our map our mapping tools, and then we've got our list in detail and then our other um, options here in our search. So note too, when you set up a saved search, a subscription or a portal, you not only um, can use the fields to help refine your search, but you can use the mapping too. So you can actually set up a defined area on your map and some search criteria and save those searches as well. So we're going to start with just the basic saved search. So the saved search, essentially what it does is it saves your information. It will continue to look for that information and it will add in new pieces. It will take out pieces that no longer apply. So if I have a property that goes from active to pending, for instance, and I'm not looking for pending properties, it's going to take that out of my search. But it will continue to look for and to update based on the criteria I've asked it to. The saved search I call really the foundational piece, and that's what we build on because we can add our subscriptions to the saved search. Um, our clients can access searches and saved, saved searches and subscriptions through their portal. And so really everything starts with the saved search. The difference with the saved search is you as the broker have to go in and engage with it. So we're going to save the saved search and then I'm going to show you how to go in and look at the material. If I don't go in and access the data, it's just saved there, it's running in the background, but it's not going anywhere. So I've got my search options here. So I'm just gonna plug in some information. I'm just gonna select active properties, detached, and I'm gonna go, well, instead of area, let's do city of Albuquerque. And I actually did this because I was curious to see how many active listings we currently have within the city of Albuquerque alone. And that's 705, which is absolutely insane. I find that hilarious and frightening at the same time. So as we know, not a lot of inventory for sale right now. But let's say, for instance, we just want to keep an eye on this. Maybe we want to keep an eye on the daily inventory, what's coming in, what's going out. And so from here to initiate my saved search, all I have to do is I have to come up here to the top right of my screen and I have to look for the saved button here. So I click on that button 
And I'm really concerned with this top option here, which refers to saving the search. So I'm going to click into that option here. Now we're going to talk about the different things that you can tell it to do here. So I want to save my search. I want it to run in the background, but I don't need it to go anywhere. But I still have to set up this saved search. Now one of the things that I have to do is I have to give my search a name. I have two options here. I have the ability to give it a new name or to override an existing search. So if this were an updated search to replace something I already have, I can do that by clicking existing and just selecting the existing search and saving. But since this is new, I'm going to click on the new tab and this means I give it a new name and it adds to my saved searches. So I'm going to give it the name, the last name, and then what I'm searching for. How you name your searches is completely up to you. It's how you like to best search and facilitate information. My only recommendation, as always, when naming anything, give it a name you can remember, but you're not embarrassed if your clients are going to see it. Because we don't want to give uh, search names pain in the neck buyer, pain in the neck seller, um, because you never know who's going to see that information. So a name you, uh, a name you can identify, but you're not embarrassed if somebody has to look at it. My search description, I can get in here and I can say all of Albuquerque detached just to give me more of a sense of what I'm actually looking for if that's something I need. Now here on this search screen, I do have the ability um, to add a contact. For this particular purpose and this general search, I may not need that. I have the option to but I'm not going to need it in this case because I'm just saving it. I want to be able to go back and access the info when I need it, but I don't necessarily need it tied to a specific contact. We're going to use the contacts next in our subscription, um, our subscription ad over um, on this. Additional search options. This actually might be something you don't want to overlook. When I click on additional search options here, I actually have the ability to customize what my search is looking for. So for instance, maybe I'm just concerned with new properties. Maybe I want to see things that have a price change. Maybe I want to see things that have changed status. Um, so that might be from active to pending, pending to closed. Maybe I want things that have come back on the market. So I have the ability to customize what I want my search to look for. What is going to define new for this particular search? And all of my searches can do different things. So once I've selected that, the other thing that I have the ability to do is to modify the time range that is considered new for this particular search. So by default, this particular search, if I saved it the way it was right now, this would be uh, considering new any listings entered or modified in the last 24 hours. I have the ability to change this based on number of days or even down to the minute if I was that specific. So maybe the market is moving relatively quickly and I really want anything updated or changed in the last 12 hours. That's strictly up to me and my process for searching for information. And then the last piece here is what view do you want to associate with this search? So for the purpose of our examples today, we're going to use just the standard residential view. You can customize views. So for instance, you can see I've got different views in here. I've got a test. I've got some samples. You can customize your results view in Flex. So if you had something specifically you wanted to see for this search, 
maybe that's uh, price per square foot or um, garage spaces, just throwing out some examples. I could set up a custom view that would just have that information or have it more prominently displayed on my report. But for this case, we're just gonna use the residential example. Um, I have found that for most clients, this is really adequate um, to meet their needs. So after I set up the parameters for my search, I wanna save this search. And the saving search is as simple of process as that. I hit save. Now that search has saved in my database. It's there, it's saved, and it's running. Now I'm gonna show you where to go in and access and modify your saved searches. But before I do, do I have any questions? All right, cool. <coughs> so now I've saved this search. Now I wanna go in and I wanna access the information. So I can do this. We can see my search is saved. Here is my, sa my name for my saved search. I'm gonna go into menu. And all of my saved searches can be found here under search in saved searches. And so if I click here, this is what I'm going to see. So in my saved searches, I can have specific searches that I favorited. So for instance, um, this particular search, if I clicked on this star and favorited it, I go back to my saved searches. I can now see under my tabs here, under favorites, I have that particular search marked. Maybe this is something that's important to me that I want to keep top of mind. All of my other searches are going to be listed here under all and drafts are simply, so if I um, went in and I did a search, let's see, modified most recently, and I left it and I came back to it, this is where those are going to end up here. Okay, so we'll go back to all of our searches here. So a couple of things you'll notice, I can search for it by name. I can also sort. So mine are sorted by name currently. So maybe I wanna sort by, um, maybe viewed most recently. And so that's gonna put the most recent on top. I have a couple of options. I can click right onto the white line here and it takes me right into my search. So again, the saved search is just gonna be there running in the background. It's not gonna go anywhere. I have to actually go into my saved searches, click on the search to engage with it. A couple of other things I can also do. If I click on these three bubbles here, I get a drop down menu and I can actually do a couple of things. I can delete searches. So let's say I don't need this anymore. I can delete it. I can rename my search if I needed to. Subscriptions. If I were to click on the subscriptions tab, I can actually see, and we'll talk more about subscriptions next, where that search is who is getting that search delivered to their inbox. And then lastly, view details. If I click on view details, it's actually gonna show me all of the details I've set up for this search. When it was last viewed, the description of the search, I can view all of the listings, listings within the last 12 hours, listings in the last month, and it's gonna give me the parameters about what it's looking for. So I'm able to get just more information on this particular search. <clears throat> and so that is a standard saved search. Do I have any questions? 
Jane, did you have a question? I was just going to ask you on your toolbar. Yeah. You have saved searches. Yep. Why? Um, can you, can you just click that and it goes straight in? Yeah, either one. So what I've done here is in my menu, I've actually favorited saved searches. So you can see the little star here. And when I do that, see if I unclick that, it disappears. So I've just added it up here. So I could actually do this and it takes me to the exact same place. I just don't have to go through the menu to get there. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's the, the basic saved search. It's there running in the background. I have to go in to my Flex menu. I can favorite saved searches, just as Jane had asked, and add that to my menu search bar here. But I have to go in and engage with it. I have to click here in order to get the information for my search. I can click view details. And in my search results, I can actually click on specifics of that search. Just want to see what's new. But I have to go in and I have to essentially initiate that, um, that result. The second piece now that we're going to add on top of this. So we have the saved search and you see here, there's a subscription piece. Now, there are many ways to add a subscription in Flex. I'm going to show you the primary way to add a subscription. But we can see here if we click on subscriptions. There it goes. If we click on that, I can see all the subscriptions, which I don't have any that are tied to this particular search. I can click here to add a new subscription to this search. That's one way that I can do that. Another way that I can do this is I can initiate like I'm going to do a saved search, but instead add that second layered piece to saving the search and adding the subscription, which is what we're going to do because it also gives us a little bit of review from the saved search as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start all over and we're going to say we're hopping into Flex on a particular day of the week and we have a new client and we're going to set up a new subscription for them. The subscription is the delivery. So the subscription is my client has said to me, I want you to email new listings that come up in this particular area I'm looking at. And you say, okay. Well, we'll set you up on a subscription and that's going to help automate that process. So that takes a little bit, a little bit of that legwork out of um, the searching for you because you can set some basic boundaries and say, I want you to just look for this and then let your client take a little bit of ownership on looking for their property and tagging properties maybe they want to see. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click on menu. And I'm going to click on quick search. So you can see quick search is also favorited for me. Um, if I favorite things, they come up here to my quick lunch bar. Um, the reason I don't access when I'm teaching a lot of things from this quick lunch bar is because I have the ability to favorite things that are important to me and they may not be necessarily important to Trey. So I go through the menu so you know where to find all of the functions that you can use in Flex. So I'm gonna hit quick search. Okay, so now I've got my residential search. Again, we're gonna keep talking in the context of residential today. But this time let's use the map. So I'm going to zoom in on this map first, just a hair. So let's say, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit more and a little bit more. Okay. 
So I'm going to search for active property. So let's say we have a client who has told us, I want to live a quarter mile from my favorite Starbucks. So right here is Copper Avenue Northeast. And right over in this area, there happens to be a Starbucks. Don't ask me why I know that, but I do. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select active properties and detached. And what I can do is I can select one of my mapping tools. Now I can do this in either order. I selected my criteria first. And then I'm going to draw my map, but I could draw my map and select, then select my criteria if I wanted to. So I'm going to select the, um, let's do the polygon. So I'm going to select the polygon and I'm going to um, just start my drawing here. Maybe my client has identified this specific area, but they want to make sure they're close to that Starbucks here. So what I have done is I've just drawn my polygon and my shape. And maybe this area is identifying exactly what I want it to select here. And now what I'm left with are my results based on my client search criteria. And right now that's not much, but that's okay. So I've got two properties that are currently active that fit my client's criteria of wanting to live in this specific quarter mile range. So now from here, I can again save this search. So I'm going to hop up here to save. I'm going to hit save search. And now I go through a lot of the same steps. So I give my search a name. Add a little description. It's by the Starbucks on Juan to Bow. This time I need to add a contact because it has to know where it's going to deliver the listings to. So I add a new contact. I put in their display name and their email address. Now my portal account is set to no. Um, that's just a default I've set up for myself because not every client I have on a subscription and that's getting those listings delivered to them necessarily wants the flexibility of a portal. But the portal can be added to this component and we're going to talk about that next. So there is a slight difference between the saved subscription and the portal. Since I happen to already be in this system, I'm going to add myself. Now, I go through the same steps as I did before. I can say for this listing, I specifically want to make sure I'm looking at price changes and back on market. A 24 hour time range is fine with me. The residential view is fine. Now, instead of hitting the save search button, I'm going to hit save and add subscription. So what this does is this actually adds a third layer or a second layer to my uh, subscription and it asks me to do some other things. And so now we're going to look at adding the components of the subscription. So do I have any questions before we do? All right, so here adding the subscription component, you can see I have my subscription name here. So a hint, give it a name you can remember, but you're not embarrassed if your clients would see, this will be delivered to your clients with their subscription. I wanna select who I'm sending these notifications to. So do I need a copy of it? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Definitely my contact probably needs a copy. Maybe I want to know when they click on the link. And preview mode. Preview mode will allow me to look at the listings before. It'll send me an email and say, hey, Kelly, check out these listings for your map area Starbucks subscription. 
and approve or decline. And I approve them. And that's the listings that I want my client to see. It'll only push through those that they want to see. So if you have a client who has a very specific need, for example, just generalizing, but maybe they want a property and that front door has to be blue. Or maybe they don't want to live on a dirt road. You have the ability to look at those before and say, okay, this does not meet their criteria. I'm going to eliminate it. My contacts are listed here. I can add another contact if I need to. The schedule. Scheduling is important. I have several options. I can add from my schedule here a certain day of the week. So I can say just send this to them on Wednesdays. Send it on a certain day of the month or send it as soon as possible. So if you have a client who's actively looking for, for a home to purchase, especially in the market conditions we are in, ASAP is likely going to be really critical because as soon as that property comes on the market, they're going to get that email versus a specific day of the week, it's going to send them a summarized email every, every Monday with a summary of all of the new listings that meet their criteria. Now our email content. So I have the ability to set up uh, some pre-made templates here with pre-made language, like congratulations, here's your subscription, please click on the link to open or I can customize that email. Make sure this email is clearly written to your client. So you might wanna put in here um, for review, new subscription, or new property. And then, you know, uh, Starbucks. This way they see it and they know to open it. And then in my email body here, I wanna have clear and descriptive language. Here is your new subscription based on the criteria we discussed. Maybe I'm recapping the criteria in the email. And then they have to do something really important here in order to get these emails. They have to click on the link. In the email that they receive, there's going to be a blue link with white letters in that email and that is going to be it's going to be right in here and it's going to say view listings they have to click on that in order to opt into the program so flex has to have permission to email that information to them they can't just spam them so if they don't click on the link that's probably why they're not getting the listings so I'm gonna show you next where you can check to make sure if your client says, I'm not getting those listings emailed to me, I'm gonna show you where you can check that um, in the event that they're not getting them and you need to resend it. So as we do that, do I have any questions? Okay. So once we set up that subscription, where I can check the components of the subscription in a couple places I can. Under contacts and subscriptions, if I click there, just to show you some kind of tips here, it takes me back to this subscription screen and I can see all the subscriptions I have set up, who they're set up for and what it's searching for. But I wanna to go to my contact card. So I'm gonna to go to menu Contact management, it's under contacts in your flex menu. If you want to, you can add that to your favorites uh, line up here where you can click on that without having to go to the menu. So I'm gonna click on contact management. Okay, so the reason I'm taking you through here is because there's several things I wanna show you in addition to just the subscriptions. So, Let's say we've set up a subscription for our client and they call us and they say, hey, I'm not getting those emails. So you first wanna have them check their junk folder. If that's been checked and there's no issues there, here's another thing you can do. I can come into contact management. So 
you can see here all of my contacts that I'm engaging with in Flex in some capacity are going to be listed here. And I need to click on the specific contact. And so our contact happens to be listed here. Okay, so here are a few things I'm going to see. The first thing is my contact details. And I just want to show you what you'll see here. I've got my client email address. If I want to include more information about my client, I can do that here. This is where you want to check. So if I have a client who is telling me, hey, I'm not getting those subscriptions, this is where you want to look right here under status and action. So what you will see if that email has been sent and they have not opened it is the message you will see right here, opt-in request sent. This means it's been sent, but the email has never been opened. If they've opened the email, you will see a different message here and it will say something like opt-in received, but there will be an option for you to resend that link one time and it will show up right here where you can click on that link and resend that. So maybe they've opened the email, but they didn't opt in. I have the ability to resend it and say, hey, heads up, don't forget to opt in. And then if they've opted in, your status is going to change to confirmed. And if they've opted out, because they have to have an abil the ability to opt out, it's gonna say they've opted out here. And so those are just different messages I want you to look for in the event you've set up your subscription. Um, I'm not going to get into this too much today, but you can add them to groups. So if you like to group your contacts like ABC, um, buyer, sellers, investors, etc., you have the ability to do that. I can see an overview of their activity here. We're going to dive into th to that a little bit more detail here in just a second. But a couple of other things I want to just point out that you have the ability to do. So right here, I have the deactivate and remove button. So just some quick notes about those. Let's say this client gets under contract and I wanna deactivate their portal access, but I don't wanna remove it. I just wanna shut it off so that they aren't getting any more subscriptions, that they can't access their portal. I can do that by deactivating. Remove. Remove actually removes them completely from your system. So it's important to know the difference between those two. Deactivating just shuts off, where remove removes them from your life like a bad dream. So unless you wanna remove someone from your life like a bad dream, you wanna utilize the deactivate button. And that can be helpful after a transaction closes as well, because oftentimes clients will call and say, I'm still getting these subscription emails deactivate it, it'll save the data for you, but it's not gonna deliver to them anymore. So from here, I can click on the activity button here. Not gonna spend a whole lot of time here. This gives you just a little bit more of a visual in terms of how they're interacting with their subscriptions and their portal, which we're gonna talk about next. What I can click next is searches and subscriptions and I get a nice overview here in this panel of what's happening with this client. Off to the left, I can see different searches that I have set up for this particular client. I can see uh, those searches. I can see any subscriptions that are included for this particular client. I can add a new subscription here. So let's say, um, I guess I accidentally didn't save this one completely or it would have shown up here. But let's say I wanted to add a new subscription. Now they're more interested in this particular area and I wanna add that delivery component. I can also add it here after the fact. If I click on the search, I can see the subscription set up for them. I can delete the subscription if I need to. 
I can also add another search for this particular client. I can edit searches. So let's say in this area we're looking for three bedrooms and now they want four. I can come in, I can edit that search, and I don't have to create a whole separate search for them. So this gives me an overview of what I'm able to see for my client. I can come in here and I can actually say, just let me see those listings in the last 24 hours. If I was interested in what was occurring for this specific search and I wanted to see some properties for my client, I would have the ability to do that. Next, I'm gonna tab over to the portal option here. There are several ways to create a portal for a client. One of those ways that I um, mentioned, we go back, in our saved search, when I add a contact, create a portal account for this client. By default, I have mine set to no. I can also say yes and invite them to a portal and it will automatically send them an email saying, hey, we're inviting you to a portal. Now, the reason I have it set to no here is because not every client wants a portal. So we're talking about three layers here. So we have the saved search that's running in the background, but it's not going anywhere. Now we're talking about the subscription. The subscription adds that second layer. It adds that delivery component to push those listings out to my client on their schedule. The portal is the third component. The portal gives them their own personal access to a public facing version of Flex. So they can log in via a username and password, get into a public facing version of Flex. They can see their subscriptions. They can see uh, properties that are actively listed in Albuquerque. And it gives them the ability and the most flexibility. So while the, the subscription is an output, so it's just delivering to them. The portal allows them to look for property, to see what's being delivered to them and gives them the ability to have, a, I would say the most ownership over their home search. Now that's not what every client wants. So think about this in ways that you can use these together or separately. And so this is really a consultation you want to have with your clients. And if they're really hands-on in their search, a portal may be really good for them. But if they're not wanting to be as hands-on um, and they're just wanting that delivery, the subscription may be all that they need. So the reason I'm going through contact management to set this up is because I want to show you a couple of other things. So if I go back to menu, Contact management, I end up back in my contact card here where we were. And here I can see, as I mentioned, the subscriptions and portals for this particular client. But now I'm gonna tab over to portal. So I opted to have mine by default turned off because I wanna be able to go in and turn it on for my client only when they need it. What the portal does, so I'm gonna have it turned on here for this client is every single user has their own portal landing page. So this happens to be mine right here and I've highlighted it for you. I'm gonna copy that. And when I paste that URL into my browser, this is what the client gets. So they first have to set up a new username and password that's unique to them. But when they log in, this is what they're going to see. They're going to see your info. They're going to see a messages tab where they can actually send you a message and say, hey, Kelly, thanks for setting me up on this. Or send you messages about property. They can click on the search tab and this is where they can actually come in and they can search an address. 
they can search a zip code and say just show me properties in this particular zip code in this particular in this particular area they can filter their searches by saying i just want uh 87111 properties with three bedrooms. So they can really get the most flexibility out of their search. And so this is tied directly to Flex. Now they're seeing what they can publicly see, but it's tied to your account and it's tied to Flex. So they're getting the most accurate information. So from here, they can click on the map, they can come in here and say, oh, I really like this listing. I'm going to favorite it by clicking the star. Oh, I don't like this one too much. I'm going to hide it, which is their software. I call it the software for delete. It takes it out of their system. Under saved, they can see every time they save a property, they click that star. They're going to see um, a listing of what they've saved and they can see any saved searches. So if you have them set up on a portal and you've saved searches for them, they can come in here and see their saved searches. They can see their saved searches and what is actually being delivered to them. So now you can see how layering, how they all work separately or together. My client with the portal, they're able to look at their saved searches. They're able to look at their saved searches with the subscription so it will also say heads up these properties meet your criteria and they can see that in their portal so i call this like a filtering system like a file cabinet so not only do they have all access to the entire active mls inventory but they can go under search in their file cabinet and see different categories of information And then newsfeed here is just going to be anything um, that has changed. So, you know, um, price changes back on market, new listings and things like that. So the nice thing with the portal is as they're saving and hiding property, I can come in here to my contact card and my portal listing collections and I can see what they're saving. I can see what they're hiding. I can see messages they've sent me. Those messages that they send me in their portal, those also go to my email. So don't think you have to log into Flex to see those. Those also go to email. So for instance, let me click in this listing here. They can say contact agent. and they hit send, and now that will be in my uh, portal message log here, it should show up here, but um, it'll also show up in my email. So the portal, again, gives my client the most flexibility. If I'm setting it up in here, I turn that on, and then actually right here, which mine looks a little different because I'm staff, but actually right here, there'll be a button that will say invite to portal. And you just click on that button and you get a similar screen that comes up that says, you know, please type your message to your client. It sends your client an email that says, hey, Trey is inviting you to, um, to engage with an MLS portal, please click on a username and, or create a username and password to start engaging. And so once they do that, that's when they're able to hop in here and they're able to, uh, you know, look at properties you've saved for them, look at properties they want to save, share properties, hide properties, etc. So that's saving searches, subscriptions, and then the portals. Do I have any question about how those work separately or how they can work together?
Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you here is you noticed in, you noticed in the port or in the contact card, there is, if I go back to my contact card here and I click on portal, you notice how there's also a recommended and a hidden by agent tab. So I'm gonna show you how, if you're conducting an independent search, how you can actually tag properties in your client's portal. So again, the idea of working with the portal is to create that online experience between your customer and the system. So I'm gonna jump into a search here. I'm gonna to go to menu, quick search. And I'm just gonna select some criteria here. This criteria is just selected at random. And let's just leave it at that. Active detached in area 30. So everybody sees up here this box that says work on behalf of. So what I can do, so let's say every single Monday I sit down for an hour and I just do some quick searching um, based on some of my clients needs and things that they, maybe they're looking for. Well, if I have clients who are using uh, portals, I can actually drop those properties or tag those properties right in their portal for them to see. So if I click on work on behalf of, what I have to do is enter one of my contacts names or click in the box here and I can see my contacts. And what it does now, you can see that this has changed from saying work on behalf of to actually identifying a client and saying work on behalf of Kelly here. So what this does is this has actually dropped me into the back end of their portal. So now I've got my search screen here, but if you notice here off to the left hand side, that is a horrible circle there, but that's okay. You notice off to the left hand side, I've got some portal options here. So what I can actually do now is I can conduct my search. I can come in and select my search criteria, active detached area 30. I could use the map if I wanted to. And I can actually look for and I can tag properties in my client's portal for them to see. So I don't have to go out and do an independent search and then email those to them. I can come in here and I can work on their behalf and I can look at properties and I can say, let me favorite this one for them. The little suitcase, I call it the suitcase here, is a recommendation. So I can click that suitcase and what it's going to do is it's going to recommend it to them in their portal. I can hide it. So maybe I've looked at this one and it's on a dirt road. I can hide it and say, yep, that's not gonna apply because it's on a dirt road. Or I can hide it, maybe I didn't set up my search to look for specific financing and maybe this property won't finance FHA because clearly at a million dollars it won't. Um, so I can, I can hide it from them. I can add notes for myself, looked, at does not have a paved road. So that I can remember certain things about that property. And so as I'm doing this, you can see that these counts over here change. So I can come in and I can work on behalf of my client. And then when I'm done, I click up here where the name is and I just say stop working on behalf of a client and it takes me out of their portal. So now if I go back into contact management, and I click on my contact, which is Kelly right here. 
and I click on portal, so we can see in the listing collections here what I've recommended, what I've hidden for, hidden for them, so it keeps it in, in a collection or keeps it in a bucket for me. And if I click on my client's portal here, under their saved listings, so they're able to see, so now you can see here I what I've recommended for them, and they can come in and they can click in here and they can see the two, two listings that I've recommended for my client. They can come in here and look at it and they can say, nope, don't like, and then maybe they want to hide it. So they have the ability, again, now they've seen what you've sent, they've hid, hidden this one, maybe they've liked this one. And so it gives you the ability to just kind of work in conjunction with your client to um, help them identify and save and see different properties. And so that's really how you maximize the use of the portal. And so it does take a little bit of coaching with your client to get them to understand how, how it works but it really allows them to get the most accurate and up-to-date information, but also allows them um, to really have kind of the most control and flexibility over their searching. And so you can see in messages here, they can see the messages they've sent you. Um, I can tell you that my email did ring and these both have gone to my email. And then as the broker, you can see what they're doing, what they're saving, what they're hiding. You can see what you've recommended to them so it keeps tabs on everything for them. Any questions about how to work on behalf of a contact in a portal? Cool. Okay, so just to recap, we talked about saving searches today. So saving searches is really the benchmark, uh, or kind of the benchmark, the foundation of our searching in Flex. We can save that search. It runs in the background, but it doesn't go anywhere. The subscription adds the delivery component. It's delivering to my client, but they've got to go into their email and engage with what's being delivered. And then that portal. That portal allows them to create that username and password and really to have more control over their searching. They're able to see saved searches and subscriptions you've set up for them. But in addition, they're able to go outside of that and search active properties and flex. And through that portal, you are able to have two-way communication. So they can say, hey, I like this, I don't like this. And then in return, you can, uh, by working on behalf of the contact, you can say, hey, check this out, or you can hide certain properties. Like they don't need to see that it's on a dirt road. It doesn't meet their criteria. And so that's how saving searches, subscriptions, and portals can work independently and can work together. And so really it's about consulting with your client and deciding based on the way that they like to receive and work with information, what piece is going to work for you. So with that, do I have any questions about anything that we've talked about today? Okay, if we don't have any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording.